okay now we will be studying the second type of participle right children the past participle okay so uh, the past participle form of a verb may end in d ed en n or t this form of verb may be also used as an adjective okay so like i told you about the present participle similarly children the past participle has uh, you know is basically uh, got these ending suffixes d ed en n or t and the two purposes again the two roles of past, uh, past participle are as an adjective and in forming tenses which tenses perfect tenses which we will be studying later in the slides okay now if we study the example the buried treasure was found by some children okay so you see over here the treasure over here the noun is being qualified by the word buried so buried is an adjective over here and it is a past participle his clothes were dirty and torn okay so basically the uh, torn is and dirty are qualifying the adjective uh, clothes okay so by torn we mean that it is a, you know it is the action tearing it is a verb but it it is over here used as an adjective to qualify clothes then the lost child was soon found and returned to its mother over here the lost is basically used as an adjective and in the case it is qualifying the verb child it is telling about the noun child okay so in all these cases there is an example with uh, ed there is an example of n being used as uh, to you know kind of uh, give us the past uh, form of it and uh, the t is being used in the case of lost okay so all these examples are basically telling that you know this is the pa the past participle in which these can be the endings okay but though these are the endings children it is overall called as ed adjectives it is not called as n adjective or en adjective like we have the ing adjective now we are dealing with the ed adjectives okay remember that the past participle forms of many verbs including the regular verbs are the same as their past tense okay what they're trying to tell children sometimes the verb itself in its past form is just the same as the past participle okay i'll help you clarify that point the greeks sometimes buried their dead okay do you know the word bury is a verb right now what is the past tense of bury buried right so buried there dead so this is the past tense of bury but in the previous example which you studied children we have used buried as an adjective so this is a past participle i hope that has clarified the point the travelers lost their way okay so this is basically the past tense of lose so they have lost their way that is a verb over here the past tense of lose okay but in the previous example that you studied the lost child it is an adjective over here this is the difference but sometimes these are the two uh, examples wherein you know many a times the past tense of the verb and the past participle or uh, form of the verb is the same just as we have uh, lost and buried over here okay the past participle form is also used with other helping verbs to form the perfect tenses i told you the two examples we've just seen the adjective now we're seeing the perfect tenses she has lost all her books this is present perfect tense now children in the case of perfect tenses always remember we have the helping verb that's the auxiliary verb has and have if you see has and have most probably you this, this will help you understand this is a perfect tense whether it is a simple perfect tense or a past perfect tense okay has had have these help uh, you know basically are used as helping verbs to frame perfect tenses okay so she has lost all her books okay so this is a present perfect tense wherein we have used the helping verb has 
and use lost which is a past participle. So we are now getting to know past participle has helped us in a, as an adjective and now it is helping us as a tense in framing the tense. The child had torn its new dress. So again over here along with the helping verb we have torn which is a past participle which is being used to frame so perfect tense. This is a past perfect tense. Okay. To avoid confusion. Once again children a lot of uh, you know contradictory and uh, uh, you know opposing points will be added now which are exceptions. So these exceptions are going to generate a lot of confusion right. So to clarify the confusion when the past participle form of a verb is used as an adjective some grammarians call it as ed adjective. I just have mentioned that point. Ed adjectives are adjectives which include everything. Those formed from verbs that end in D, E, D, E, N, N or T. It also includes the past participle or the basic past tense of a verb. All those things. The meaning of an ed adjective may be a little different from the usual meaning of the corresponding verb. Now this is the first exception. Okay. The first exception is noted writer. Now children do you know the meaning of note? Note means to notice. To make a note of something. To notice, observe something. Whereas noted writer means when you use it in the past per participle then it means famous, unusual. Okay. Animated discussion. Once again children animate itself means to bring to life. But animated as a past participle has the meaning lively discussion. Okay. So these are the two examples. The ED adjective may not have a corresponding verb at all. Okay. So these are a few examples we will be going through wherein we come to know the corresponding base form of verb is either missing or is uh, along with some other helping verb. Let's check. Armored car. Okay. So armor basically is a noun. So when we add the suffix ed, then we are coming, uh, to come getting the past participle, armored car. Okay. So armored car is basically protected by metal covers. Okay. So basically this is being derived from a noun rather than a verb. Okay. A little different version. So this is an exception. Wooden, wooden area. Okay, again a noun along with ed. Hooded snake, a noun along with ed. Beloved leader, there is no corresponding verb as beloved. Is there any word a verb as beloved? No. Exception. Cold blooded killer. Now in the case of cold blooded, cold is altogether a new, uh, you know, uh, individual verb having its own meaning. You know, uh, then we have the noun blood along with ed. So this is another example of exception. Warm hearted. Warm along with the noun heart and ed. So there is no corresponding verb in these sentences. Like we started the previous examples. We had verb along with ing or ed. But over here no corresponding verbs are there. So these are, there are exceptions which will be making new ed verbs. Wooded, hooded, beloved, cold blooded. Warm hearted. These new ed verbs are coming but they are not derived out of some corresponding verb. The name ed adjective is used to refer to all the adjectives that are formed with the help of. So it is including all these verbs which have corresponding verbs which do not have corresponding verbs. Which are past tense which are past participle. Okay. And some of them may not be related to any verb or may not have any corresponding verb at all. Though the D, E, D, E, N, N or T form of verb used as an adjective is often called a past participle, we shall always call an E, D adjective. You know the meaning why? Because there are so many exceptions. The past participle form is also used to form past perfect tense. We've already studied that. The past tense form of a verb may be the same as its past participle form. So we've already studied that as well. That the past tense of a verb like we studied about buried being used as an adjective and buried being the past tense. Warning. It is important therefore to find out how the D, E, D, E, N or N or T form of a word has been used in a sentence, clause or phrase. So how do you get to know? 
by reading the sentence, understanding the sentence, what is the placement of these verbs, you'll be able to understand what is it being used as. If it has been used on its own, it is a simple past tense form of a verb. For example, a high wall protected the city from its enemies. It is a past tense of protect. Okay, So protect over here is basically protected that is past tense of the basic verb if it has been used as an adjective how will it see, uh, appear if it is used as an adjective you cannot enter a protected area so area is the noun protected is the adjective qualifying area over here so this is a past participle if it has been used with a helping verb it is a past participle form of verb consent. Okay, so over here we are going to form tenses. This wall has protected the city for many years from its enemies. So we have has over here the helping verb, the past participle. So we get the tense, present perfect tense. Okay, so children now we come to know if you study the sentence, you get to know whether it has been used in the past tense whether it has been used as past participle or whether it has been used to, you know, frame a tense of the particular verb. Okay, so this is clear. Thank you children.